Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer and welcome to video 5 for research tools at the University of New Hampshire Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping, Joint Hydrographic Center. In this video I will be showing you a tutorial of using the Ubuntu Bash Terminal shell. This is an environment that is all text-based where we can type, we won't use the mouse at all, and we're going to go through and run commands that will let us create all sorts of tasks, handle them, and then figure out how we can put them into a script at the end. Now I'm going to show you the basics of moving around the terminal. The first command I'm going to show you is ls for list. This list files. You can also give it options. You can do a long listing with a dash l. And that will tell you more information. In this case, you can see a d for directory, rwx for read, write, execute, read, and execute. So you can take a look at each of your things here. The color on the right will help give you hints towards the type of file. So we have directories here in blue and an archive of multiple files here in red. We can also ask the system, where are we? We can do a print working directory. And that tells us that we're in home research tools. And in this case, we're using an account called research tools. You can do a CD. So we can CD into homework and then you can run an ls. We've changed directory into another uh, folder or directory below that and then you can say pwd and it will now tell us that we're down below in uh, the homework directory. There's two ways to get back. We can do cd dot dot which is the parent directory and that then puts us back here at research tools or we can if we go back into homework and we do cd tilde that will always take you to your home directory. All right, let's go ahead and create a quick file. So we can type touch. This is going to create an empty file, or if the file already exists, it will just update the time on it. We'll do touch one, two, and three. So now if we take a look, we've created three files called one, two, and three. This column right here is the file size, and you can see that it's zero bytes. Um, if we want to create a directory, we can say make dir for make directory, and we'll say test dash directory. And now if we do an ls-l, we now at the bottom have test directory. Now it's important to know how to be able to clean up after yourself. Be very careful with the rm commands. It can be hard to undo the files and if you have no backup system they may be gone forever. But to remove files, the command is rm and we can give it a file name, so rm1. And in this case I have it set up so that it will actually ask me the question yes or no. Your account will likely not have that. So if we press Y here, it will say yes. Or we can delete two files from the same command line. So here's two and three, rm, yes, and yes. Now if we try to rm a directory, so rm dash, and now also with the command shell, if you're partway through and it, there's one unique answer, you can always press tab to complete out the file name. So if I try to rm the test directory, it complains saying that this is the directory rm only removes files. So we can do rmdir test, and press tab, directory. And now if we take a look, we've cleaned up after ourselves. You can also ask the system what time is it? And you can do that by typing date. Now if you noticed before up here, our files had a timestamp of 2 a.m. It's not currently 2 a.m. So we need to ask the system to update the time. This is a virtual machine. If it's been asleep, it may not be able to get the time right. And by doing, we can ask it what time with date, and then we can go and check, make sure it's up to date. So sudo is the command that lets us become basically root or administrator and get extra privileges. So ntp date is the command to update the time. And then we need to ask it, it was going to want to know which host to go get the time from. So the folks at Ubuntu provide a time server that we can ask. And so we'll ask it to run ntp date and go off to the NTP server at Ubuntu and get the time. So now I need to type my password, and since this is a virtual machine, I will tell you my password. It is an exclamation point, RT 2011 VM, press enter. And now it's off working to set the time. Working, working, working. This might take a while, depending on what all it has to do with the network. And you can see here that it's changed the time quite a bit. The offset was quite large. So now if we type date again, it actually says that it's 10 in the morning, which is much more reasonable. Okay, 
Now, if you get confused by having too much stuff on the screen, we can always run the clear command. That will delete everything that's currently on our screen. So press enter and clear has cleared the screen. Okay, so that's giving you the basics of moving around a little bit. We've done a LS for list. Print, print working directory was PWD. CD for uh, change directory. Touch to create a file or update the time. MKDIR for make directory. RM for delete a file, and RMDIR for deleting directories. Now, let's find out more about some of these programs. And built into Linux are things called man pages. So with the system comes a whole lot of documentation. And you get to that through the program called man. So if we do man ls for the list command and press enter, it now brings you into the man page for ls. Now you can move down with the arrow keys hopefully they're working right for you. You can also press space to go down by a page. And if you need to get out of this, you pre press Q for quit. There's Q. Okay, so we're back there. Now we can say man-k and give it an option. That option is going to say we want to know about uh, things with some word in them. So if we take, take uh, length, man-k length, it's then going to tell us what things uh, have man pages with the name length in them. And so there's a whole bunch of different things on here. If you see a number two in there, that will be uh, for system calls. This is a C programming language thing that you can ignore. And number three is another C programming language thing that you can ignore. You also see man pages for the programming language Perl and lots of other stuff hiding in here. So if you're searching for something, man-k, and let's pick one Emacs. So this will actually go out there and search for it. So here's some programs that have Emacs in their one line descriptor. So for here example, here's some program called C tags that you could use that has a man page. So if we type man C tags, it's now going to tell us all about that program. And you can take your time and read all that. And that was actually using a program called a pager called less and if we do an ls-l, I have an example uh, tar file here, which is called the tape archive. It's very similar to a zip on Windows, but it predates zip by quite a bit, and it's, in my opinion, much more user-friendly for a Unix-type environment. So let's take a look at what's in that tar. So tar, and then tf is list, for, is t for some reason, and f is file. So we're going to list what's in there, examples dot 2011 I'm going to press tab to complete so now we can take a look what's in that tar and there's a whole bunch of example files that we can use to to try out more commands so if I'm going to do I hit the up arrow to get to a previous command and we're going to do an X for extract and you don't have to be at the end of the line to press enter so I'm just going to do it right here enter and it went off and extracted that so let's do an LS dash L for a long listing and you'll now see that in addition to the tape archive, there's actually a directory to go with it. Let's go into that directory with the cd command for change directory. We've cd into examples, pwd for print working directory, and here we are. So now we can do an ls-l and take a look around. So there's a whole bunch of sample files that I've created here in this little package to help try out lots of different commands. Now, one thing that we've got here is uh, we've got them in unsorted order in terms of file size. There, This is file size in the middle. And we'd like to actually have them sorted by file size. So the command for that, you add an S, a capital S on that LS. And that then sorts it by file size with decreasing at the bottom. So here, for example, we have a small program called shellscript.sh that we can take a look at. And I'm going to use that command called less, and we're going to go take a look at it. So less shell script.sh, and I press tab right here after the sh. Now, if we press enter, we're in a pager that's very similar to the man page pager. And with that, it's not very interesting in terms of a short, long, uh, short file, but if this were a longer file, and we can take a look at, uh, say, let's look at um, delicious.htm. This is an HTML file. 
This one is a lot longer and we can scroll down through that file, scroll back up, press space to go down. Okay, so there's a couple other commands that are helpful. The head command will take a look at the first 10 lines of a file. So we can say head hello world.c and it will print out the first 10 lines. We can press, we can type tail and if we say tail web page HTML, it's going to give us the very last 10 lines. So there's the last 10 lines right here of the tail. This is the bottom of that file. Those are helpful to take a look at what's going on in, in uh, particular data files. We can also do a word count. So that'll give us the number of words and lines in a file. So word count hello world.c. And this tells us that we have, uh, I believe it's 11 lines, 29 words, and 198 characters. Now we can also say if we hit the up arrow and then I move back here and edit this and dash L will give us lines only. So here we've got that we just have 11 lines in our hello world.c. Now there's an important command in Unix that will tell us all about what's in files as much as it can and that's the file command. So if we use star, which represents any file that it can match on this directory, it's going to go through, so that again was the file space star command, it will tell us what it thinks each of the files are. So let's start off with file sample.pdf and that shows us that it looked in that file, it didn't look at the PDF on the file name, it actually looked in the file and it said it's a PDF document version 1.5. Now if you're using less, you can actually take a look at that file and see what it took a peek into. And it wasn't very exciting. Okay, so the next command we're going to do is identify. Now this command knows about images, so it knows more about what's going on. So if we take a look at ls-star.png, uh, nope, nothing, ls-star.gif, nothing jpeg nothing do i have any images in this directory there we go so extensions are not necessarily mandated so in this case it's jpeg so we have one jpeg if we say file and this particular picture it just tells us the jpeg if we say identify 2011 press tab jpeg you'll see that it tells us more it actually tells us the width and height of that jpeg and then some other fancy information about that it's an 8-bit image and a few other things like that. Now we've done a lot but it might be helpful to see what we've got that we've done in our past. If you want to take some notes maybe you need to paste some of those things and rerun them. If you type the history command this is going to list out everything that we've done. If you press history there's a lot. So in this case you might want to do something like tail. Now this vertical bar here is called a pipe and that pipe will actually take data that comes out of the history command and pass it over to the tail command. So it'll give us those last 10 uh, entries. If we re want to rerun one of those we can do an exclamation mark and then the command number. So let's go ahead and rerun this identify command here. So we'll do bang or which is another word for the exclamation mark 732 and there we've rerun the identify command. So there you go. Now you can also do um, a command called grep. So if we have history and we want to grep for a particular string, this is a search command that will search inside of text for any patterns that it matches. It's very fancy, but in the simple case we just give it a basic string. So if we type jpeg we're going to search for any command in our history that had the four letters JPEG, these right here. So if I press enter, we'll see that we actually ran a whole bunch of other commands that had the word or the four letters JPEG in there. And you'll see that it's actually been nice enough to highlight for us where it found the matches for each of those lines. Now it can also do uh, the exact opposite. We can do dash V, which says don't tell us anything with JPEG in it. So any line that has JPEG won't get uh, printed out. So then if we pipe tail and we get, we're chaining these together. So we're just gonna take the last 10 and our history grep JPEG 
will not be in this list. So if we do tail, excuse me, history, pipe that to tail, there is actually a command in here that we should have seen that was that grep for JPEG, and that was removed by the, the grep minus V. Okay, now in, uh, in the beginning when I did the RM, it actually showed me that um, the RM command was asking a question, yes or no, that's not the default behavior, and there's something called aliases. So if I say the command type, so you actually type the word type, and then I say rm, it's going to tell me that it's aliased to rm with this dash i command. And the dash i is what asks you, do you really want to delete that file? Now if I do type space dash a rm, and dash a stands for all here, so it's going to tell me all of the places it can find rm on this computer. And it's actually finding a program in this path called slash bin slash rm. So that's a system program called rm and I'm actually using this alias which then gets passed to this command so it ends up putting those together. Now you can list all of your aliases by just typing the word alias and you'll see that there's actually quite a few aliases that come with a standard setup of Ubuntu Linux. Okay so now let's uh, wrap up for there and we'll do another video in the future uh, so thanks for joining me and I hope this was helpful.